In the last video, I tested the braking strength of about 100 Seagauer, Surgeons, and Albright knots in 30, 40, and 50 pound monofilament and spectra. But in this video, I'll test the braking strength of PR knots and Bimini to worm knots. I'll also retest the Albright knot as a point of reference. But in the end, we'll see that the PR knots were, by far, stronger and more consistent than either of the other two. We'll also show that the Bimini to worm and Albright knots typically break at about 80% of the monofilament's line strength. They're good knots to tie, fairly strong, and they're fairly easy to tie, but the PR knots I tie in this particular video showed breaking strengths that were equal to that of the monofilament itself, pretty close to 45 pounds. None of the PR knots I tested broke at the knot, instead they all broke away from the knot somewhere in the monofilament. So the PR knot is very close to being a 100% knot, and it's also very smooth going through the guides. You can check out the video below to see a ex good example of how to tie one. Now before I go over the knots or show the test in action, I'll take a minute to go over the test jig that you see here in case you didn't see it in the first video. So the system is set up with a scale weight and a bucket full of water on top of it. And I have a line in the bottom of the bucket held down by a fishing weight just to hold it in place. The line is primed and just by gravity feed it will come down the tubing into the test jig uh, down through the end here and here's our spindle with our line put on it and it's the water is simply going to come down that run of tubing and here we have our PR knot that we're going to test and the water comes down through the tubing the line is going there through the pulley and the water is coming out uh, the other end through this shutoff valve and into the bucket and the bucket is held in place by the line uh, with the crimp and the anti-chafing spring and the water simply goes into the bucket and we have the test weights down here at the bottom that we would put in the bucket before we started the test so that's the test jig just as it was before in the prior video so that setup is what I used for testing in this video, and it shows one improvement I had made since last time. In the first round of testing, I crimped the spectra end of my knots and put the loop over the eyelet. It worked out okay, but there were a couple of knots that broke midline in the spectra itself. And I wasn't sure if that was due to twists in the spectra that I had to make just to feed it through the crimp, or if it was another factor at play. So in this jig, I added a rod covered in EPDM tubing so that I could eliminate any influence that crimping the spectra might have had during the first round of testing. The rod also lets me wind the line around it like it would be if it was going on a reel. Now let's take a look at the three knots I tested. I tied Albright knots using 30 pound Iserline Triple X monofilament and 40 pound Jerry Brown solid spectra. I made eight wraps up and eight wraps down and cinched using knot pullers. I added a dab of super glue to secure the wraps. For the bimini to worm knots, I made a 30 turn bimini and 40 pound Jerry Brown solid spectra and then connected it to a 12 turn worm knot and 30 pound Isoline triple X monofilament. For the PR knots, I didn't make them myself. A fellow named Walt provided them to me and they were made in 30 pound Isoline triple X monofilament with one knot wrapped in 30 pound Jerry Brown solid spectra and a set of another five knots wrapped in 40 pound Jerry Brown solid spectra. These knots were very, very well done. The wraps are tight and the whole knot will go smoothly through guides. It takes some practice to tie, but these knots tested to very close to 100% of the breaking strength of the straight monofilament itself. In all the testing I did, the line never broke at the PR knot and the PR knots never unraveled. Here's a good video on how to tie it. And for a money-saving tip, you don't need to go out and buy a special $40 bobbin. The ones used for fly tying work just fine and are only about $7.
In that test, the PR knot in 30 pound monofilament broke at 45 pounds. The other four PR knots I tested broke at 43 to 44 pounds each, so the knot itself was very consistent and very strong. I repeated this test for the other two types of knots. The modified Albright knots broke on average at about 36 pounds, and the Bimnita worm knots also broke at about 36 pounds on average. In the end, the PR knots are both stronger and more consistent, and there's a higher amount of variability in the breaking strength of the Albright and Bimnita worm knots. That isn't to say that the knots themselves are variable, but I think it shows my personal technique for tying them has some variability, even as I try to be consistent as I can. And in case you're wondering if there was some unaccounted for variability in the test jig itself, here's a chart showing the breaking strength of straight 30-pound Iserline Triple X monofilament used in my first video, and the test repeated just before I shot this video. The difference between the average of 44 versus 46 pounds is only about 5%, or 2 pounds. So the test jig is performing consistently in the filming of this video. And remember, the breaking strength of monofilament is usually above the value you see on its label, and most folks aren't surprised to hear that 30 pound isoline breaks in the mid 40 pound range. So in this round of testing, I found that the modified Albright and Bimini to worm knots broke at about 36 pounds, at least the way I tie them. But the PR knots all broke at about 45 pounds, which is about the same breaking strength of the straight monofilament itself. So the PR knots are pretty close to being true 100% strength connections when tied to monofilament. The PR knot takes some time to tie, but when it's done right, it gives you the option of fishing with a lighter line if that's what it takes for you to get a bite. On top of that, you get the benefit of a greater spool capacity, and the knot will very easily go through the guides, unlike some of the other Spectra to mono connections that are out there. In my next video, I'll test the breaking strength of line-to-hook connections, including Palomar knots, Spangler knots, San Diego Jam knots, and a few others. In the meantime, post any comments or questions you have down below in the comments section, and thanks for watching.